So today is actually, so we were singing that song, and when Justin hit that note um, about prepare the way of the Lord, and man, I was just, I just, I sank into that. Because I got to thinking, because today is, is, is what we as Christians call Palm Sunday. This is the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and they welcomed him in. And by doing that, they laid palm leaves down in front of him. And he came into Jerusalem, and he rode in. And so I just, I just had in my mind, as we were worshiping, as we were just singing and, and just praising his name, that we were just, come on, we were just preparing the way for him. Preparing the way for him to touch our lives, preparing the way for him to come into our hearts, preparing the way for him to do for us what he said he would do, amen? And so in doing that, we've been on this series, and I love this series, and I love that it hit, um, it actually hit right where I, <laughs> I'm so glad it did, and and it did this way as a complete God thing because we're supposed to be on, on, on the fourth part of this series, but we're on the third part because last week we had an amazing message given to us by Pastor Sean from Vertical Church. And uh, I, if you are not here, go watch the message. Like he spent time asking God, what did we need as a church at this point in time? And he talked about harvest last week. An absolutely amazing message. So I'm so thankful that they are in our lives and so thankful that they were able to come. Um, but we are on this series called What's the Point? What's the Point? And the subtitle of that is Donkey Mission. Come on, like, like actual donkey mission. Like we've been talking about this guy in the Old Testament named Saul. And he went on a mission looking for donkeys. I mean, we're talking, come on, y'all, looking for donkeys for his dad. And we talked about last week, like, we know a lot of things, and it shows us a lot of things, but there's things that it didn't show us. Like, we have no idea how many donkeys there were. That's it. We have no idea how many donkeys there were. We have, we have no idea that he took a guy with him. We have no idea what the guy's name was. But there are several things that the Bible does say within that. And so today, we're going we're gonna to talk about something um, that I know we all need to talk about. Excuses. Oh, yeah, that was a great response. I like that. Excuses. Today, because that is something when we are on our donkey mission. You see, we all go through donkey missions. We all go through things that seem like it's just a mundane, what are we doing why are we having to walk through this? Why are we having to go through this? And a lot of times when we're going through it, man, we make excuses on why we shouldn't be going through it. Y'all don't do that, do you? Okay, that's okay. <laughs> you know, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you made an excuse? You see, we, we kind of ask a question every week about things, and usually it's like, oh, yeah, I, I can answer that, right? But excuses are one of those things that, um, like, you don't realize you're making it until afterwards. You know, like, like um, hey, guys, I, I can't come today because of this or because of that or because of what's going in. Or, you know what, hey, uh, I know I need to go to the gym, but I'm busy today. I know I need to eat better, but, man, like, like, like mama made some cheeseburgers last night that were just like, you know what I mean? Like, I got invited out to eat, Pastor. Like, I was eating good. I was doing good, but, you know what, I, I, may, have, I may have fell off with that cheeseburger last night. I didn't have a cheeseburger. I wish I, never mind. Anyway, um, <laughs> So we want to talk today um, about the importance of this. So if you would, turn with me. We're going to go back to our story in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And we're going to go back to verse 1. We're going to read through a th few things here. So before we get there, while you guys are turning there, I'm going to pray. Amen. So Father, I just thank you for today. I thank you for the hearts that are here today. Lord, that our hearts would be opened up to receive from you. That our ears would be 
open to hear from you, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us. And that our eyes would be open, that we may see, Father, what you have for us today. Father, let it be more than just me speaking up here. Let it come directly from you. Holy Spirit, speak to the hearts. Let us receive what each person needs today directly from you, God. Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So 1 Samuel, here we go. 1 Samuel chapter 9, we're going to start in verse 1. And it said, there was a Benjamite, a man of standing, whose name was Kish, son of Abel. And then we go through this whole thing. And then verse 2, it says, Kish had a son whose name was Saul. As handsome of a young man as it could be found anywhere in Israel, and he was the head taller than anyone else. Verse 3. Now the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son, Saul, take a servant and go look for the donkeys. So they took off, and and here's the deal, they took off to, to several different places. And and actual donkey mission of looking for donkeys. Like, come on, y'all. Something I'm sure he did not want to do. Travel 30 to 40 miles looking for these donkeys. And then we get to verse 5, and it says this. They they end up in this, this place called Zeph. It says, when they reached the district of Zeph, Saul said to his servant who was with him, come on, let's, let's just go Back. said, my father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. In other words, we've been out here so long that my dad is going to, forget the donkeys, like where's my son at? Come on, y'all. And so he wanted to quit and he wanted to go back. Verse 6, let's keep going. So thankful for the servant that was with him because he said, hang on, he said, but but look, he said, in this town, he said, we just happen to be here. In this town, there is a man of God. And he's highly respected, and everything that he says comes true. Let us go there now. Perhaps he will tell us the way to take. And Saul said to his servant, but if we go, what can we give the man? The food in our sack is gone. We've been traveling for so long. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? You know, I think it's interesting that that when they reach this place of Zeph, and they've been traveling and looking in four other places, and they reach Zeph, and they come in, and and, and Saul's just like, I'm done. Ain't y'all ever been done? Yeah, come on, y'all. Like, I'm done. Some of y'all at work on Friday was like, hey, huh. I know it's only 10 a.m., but I'm done. You know what I mean? Like, like, come on, like, it's time to go home. I know some of y'all teach school. It's like, yep, it's almost done, right? Come on. <laughs> All my teachers are saying, yes, amen. But he starts making excuses on this trip. And he starts making excuses. Hey, let's just, we don't have anything. And then, and then his servant's like, hey, listen, we can do this. Like, I've got this man of God just happens to be here at this certain time. Now, this was the prophet Samuel. And what God did in the Old Testament, like in the New Testament, God's inside of us and speaking to us. But in the Old Testament, he used these men of God to speak to people. And this was a man of God that God spoke to, and then he spoke to the nations. And they followed what he said. Everything he said came true. And he's like, you want me to go ask him about my donkeys? Yeah, let's go ask him about our donkeys. And so he starts making all these excuses. So I want to give you three thoughts on our excuses. You ready? If you're taking notes, uh, write these down. If you're not taking notes, take notes and write these down and so that you will not forget them. All right, number one, you ready? Excuses always start with but. Excuses, did you see it? I mean, he said, his servant was like, hey, let's go do this. And Saul was like, yeah, but you know what? I don't know if we can, I don't know if we have, I I don't think we can. Guys, every time you start something with but, you're starting an excuse. 
his, his friend, his, his servant that is with him, offers a possible solution. And it starts out with Saul going, yeah, but. How many of us in our life, when we're, we're following God, and we're doing the things God has us to do, and we just reach that point, and sometimes we're just like, God's like, hey, I just, why don't you go into this w one more city? Let's do this one more thing. Yeah, but it didn't work out the last time. Like, it just, it didn't work out, and I'm just not sure about this time. We all do this. Trying to eat healthy, trying to exercise, our to-do list, our housework. Come on, our kids' homework. How many kids? I didn't even get into that. Um, paperwork. And can we just be real? Any work? We just like, but do I really? Oh, y'all ain't like me. Okay, I'll keep going. Y'all, I, I, I can already see you guys are, are different than me. Like, um, So last, last May, Pastor Fair and I, um, we actually, okay, so I'm going to go back a month before that. And that's actually last Easter of last year. So how many of y'all always do your Easter photos, right? Like we, and we, and next week we will have a backdrop. We'll have the little Easter deal out here. Y'all come take photos, um, you, all that good stuff. Uh, if you want kind of a, a, a really nice photo, Christy will be here with her camera and taking photos and things. So last year, it's like, this is the one time a year. I don't know about you guys. This is the one time a year that my family actually gets together and actually takes a photo. Everybody slows down long enough, right? And so last year, Pastor Fair and I were up there, you know, and we took the photo and everything, and then, you know, it, it, we, we got to looking, and Christy sent us the photos that she took and everything, and Pastor Fair and I are looking at the picture going, holy moly, like, like do we look like that? <laughs> Sorry. This is, I'm giving y'all a real conversation, guys. Like, I know y'all don't ever, you know, you know that every time you look at a photo with you in it, who's the first thing you're looking at? Like, even if it's like a wedding photo of, of your best friend, like, getting married, oh, yeah, and then what are you doing? What do I look like? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, we looked at that photo last year, and we were like, do we look like that? Like, and so in May, May 9th of last year, Pastor Fair and I started on this lifestyle eating chain right? Yeah, yeah. Lifestyle eating change. And we lost, combined, we lost about 100 pounds. Y'all should have been a lot happier about that. We were. And, and it was within about the, the first four or five months that we lost this weight. And then how many know that a lot of times when you're doing really, really good at something, life hits? Like things just seem to slap you in the face. And so our last, the last end of last year, the season that we went through was, was a rough season. And so, you know what? Pastor started making excuses like, like I, I'd rather eat a cheeseburger than not. I, I would rather have my fajitas than not. I'd rather have my nachos than not. Come on, y'all. And so start making excuses. So, you know what? Pastor's gained some weight back. Hadn't gained it all back. But I've gained some of that weight back. Why? because I started making excuses in my life. I started allowing the circumstances in my life to dictate what I did instead of me doing that. And every time people would ask me, oh, you look good, how much have you lost? Yeah, I've lost this, but I've gained like 20 of it back or whatever, yeah. Kind of went through a hard season and, and I stress eat, and so I started making excuses. How many of us in our life when we get a word from God and we are pushing forward in our word from God and then the devil just slaps us upside the head and we start making excuses why we can't finish. We start making excuses why things just don't. Well, I, 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 I lost my mom, so I started to eat. I lost my dad. I lost my job. COVID hit, 
and things just turned everything upside down. And, and we start using these excuses in why we're doing things in our life. So I've got a question for you. Where have you been making excuses? Stop and think about your life. Like, what are you making excuses for? And I guarantee you, as soon as I said that, every one of you guys were like, yep, right there. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm making an excuse because how long are you going to let the same excuse keep you from moving forward and keep you from your greater mission? You see, Saul hit a place in his donkey mission to where God had ordained him to be in Zeph, talking to the prophet at a specific time, told the prophet 24 hours earlier, I'm sending you somebody to anoint to be the king. And he got to that point of pressure, and Saul says, I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to give up. Yeah, but, but, but pastor, I'm, man, I'm, just, I'm just not good enough at that. Or, Pastor, hey, uh, I, but, you know, I, I'm just not smart enough. I'm, I'm just not educated enough. I'm just not rich enough. I, I, I have a past, Pastor, you don't understand, but, but I have kids and I can't make time for that. And, uh, Pastor, I'm getting too old. Or, hey, I'm just I'm too young to do that for God. Or, or, Pastor, you know what? It's just you fill in the blank. When being asked to do something, what are you saying but about? And what is the excuse? You know, the reality is, is that if we want to find an excuse, we will. Like, if you don't want to go really go out to eat with the friend you told you would go out to eat with, like, you'll find an excuse not to go. Come on, let's just be real. Like, I, like, <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> like my throat <clears throat> started hurting, right? Come on, y'all. Like, I, I don't, I don't want it, to, it may be, it may not be nothing, but I'm just going to stay home tonight. Come on, we're going to find an excuse not to do everything. Number two, you ready? Excuses, listen to this, excuses come from three places. Pride, fear, and scarcity mentality. We're going to look at this, and in the pride, it said, so... So in verse 5 of what we were reading, did you catch what Saul had said? He said, come let us go back. My father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start thinking about me. Like, forget the mission that we're on, guys. Like, like I'm the important thing to my father. How many times when we're doing something and we're pushing into something, how many times do we think, uh, you know what, this is, this is really beneath me. Like, I'm, I'm way better than, than, than doing this. Uh, I deserve better than this if people knew what they were asking me to do I shouldn't have to do this or how about this is humiliating you know when I was in Bible college um, my first year of Bible college I was a janitor at a church and I was vacuuming and I was sweeping and I was mopping and I was cleaning up pee in the bathrooms every day because they had a school, they had a nursery. I was cleaning vomit off of carpet. I was cleaning that. I was doing those things. And how many know that I could have stopped and been like, you know what, I'm in Bible college. Like, what the heck am I doing as a janitor? But you know what, I knew that's where God wanted me. And I learned so much behind the scenes things because I didn't grow up with a mom and a dad that were in ministry. I didn't grow up uh, in a ministry family. And so a lot of the behind the scenes things, I had no idea. But, but going to Bible college and working as a nighttime janitor at a, at a church, I got to learn these things. But had I looked at that and been like, eh, like that's, I'm, I'm a Bible college. I'm going, I'm going to be a pastor someday, y'all. The second one, fear. When the servant offers a viable option, look what Saul says again. Here you go, verse 7. It says, 
Saul said to his servant, but if we go, what can we give the man? The food in our sacks is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? You see, he jumps into fear mode. Like if we go, we don't, we don't have anything to give to him. How many times has God asked you to do something and you're like, I just, I, I can't do it. I don't, I don't have the resources to do that. How many of you during an offering, God puts an amount on your heart and you're like, God, you know what my bills are this year. You know what's going on. How many times do we make excuses? Amen? Come on, y'all. Let's just be real today. Fear jumps in. How often do we do it in our own lives? Like when you get asked to do something or go somewhere, like I don't have anything to, to wear. I don't, I don't have time to go. And what will people think? And, I, you know, I just can't afford that. And don't invite them over. The house isn't clean. You don't know how many times. I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses about my wife. This is more about me not asking my wife. But you know what? I just invite people over. And then about five minutes, I'm like, oh, hey, like I invited so-and-so to come over. And she's like, what? <laughs> and y'all know about that closet that we talked about last week, right? That you, sh that's, yeah, it's that closet that you shove everything in. What is it that makes us react this way? It's fear. Fear of rejection and fear of failure. You know, I look back in my life at a lot of things that, that I could have done. And I look at a fear of failure. I look at a fear of, of, of rejection of, of my friends. You know, growing up in high school, that's a, that's a big thing. And we've all been there. Like we don't do certain things because we don't want to get rejected or we, we, just, we just don't want to do it. And that mentality follows us over into our workplace. God said, hey, I've given you a gift and a skill to do something. And you're just like, yeah, but what if it doesn't work? What if, what if I can't accomplish that? What will my friends think about me if I don't do that? You know, when we, four and a half years ago, and actually we started in this building five years ago, but we didn't launch until September of 2018. But God asked us, I need you to go plant a church. I need you to go plant a church. And it ended up being, at that time, we didn't know where it was at. It ended up being Abilene, Texas. And, and I, I'll be honest, there was a little bit of fear there. Because God said, go sell everything you have and move. Go sell your business. Go sell your properties. And go start a church. And I'm like, no, wait, God, like, what if it doesn't work? What if the church doesn't work out? How am I supposed to make a living? What if things don't go right? God, I don't know anybody in Abilene but my sister. What if? What if people don't like what I have to say? What if people don't like me? What if the things, it's that fear of failure and that fear of rejection. And then we have a fear of scarcity mentality. When the servant offers a viable option, Saul saw through the eyes of scarcity, not faith. Verse 7, it said this. It said, Saul said to his servant, but if we go, what can we give the man? The food in our sacks are gone. We have no gift to take to him. What do we have? You know, we have nothing to give to him. You know, I think a lot of times when we push into things, think about your life right now. Think about where you are right now. Think about your job, your home, your kids, everything you have. Think about what you want to supply, what you want to do, what you want to see happen. Are we standing in faith for everything? Are we standing in faith for what God wants us to do? Or are we in a, a fear mentality? A scarcity mentality. Like if I step out, and let me tell you what, when God said sell everything and move 
to start a church, we sold everything. Without an income coming in, without anything, and then get what God did here. Ha uh-huh. ha, right? Sometimes I think he just enjoys this. So <laughs> we were supposed to launch our church in February of 2018. We get up to October of 2018, the beginning of October, and God laid on my heart, you need to move your launch date to September. I fought with, I don't know y'all do this, but I fought with God for three weeks. God, I don't have the resources to go another six months. I don't have the, the, any way for us to live for the next six months. I don't have, God, I don't, I don't, but God, but God, I don't. Three weeks I fought with God. And at the end of three weeks, I said, yes, sir. And at the end of three weeks, we moved our launch date. And let me tell you what, for that following six months from February to September, God supplied. We had money come in that we didn't know were coming in. We had things come in. We had things happen. God just started supplying for us. This building, y'all, come on, this building came in. Our worship leader at that time came in. Things start, God started supplying for us that entire time. But what if I hadn't have done it? What if I had said, God, you know what? I, I think I'm done. I think I'm going to take the rest of our money and just go start another business. I don't think this is what I want to do. It would have been a scarcity mentality. It would have been a fear mentality inside. Do you see yourself in any of Saul's excuses? Do you see yourself in a fear mentality? Scarcity mentality? Do you see yourself? So the question is, what do we do? Come on, how many, how many always, like, like we need an answer to the question, right? So let's give an answer to that. Number three, we overcome excuses with faith. We overcome excuses with faith. When Saul pushed back, here's what his servant said, and I love this. Verse 8, the servant answered to him, Look, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. And I will give it to the man of God, and he will tell us what way to take. So that quarter of a shekel of silver, you look it up, and it, it was equivalent at that time to about 50 cents. Like, we ain't got nothing but 50 cents left. But we're going to give our 50 cents to the man of God, and he's going to tell us which way to go. You see, Saul was looking for excuses and scarcity, and fear and I'm so glad that his servant the one with him was looking through a lens of faith you see sometimes our lens gets cloudy so when I turned 40 and that was a few years ago um, <laughs> yes I turned 47 this year okay so woo-hoo. but when I turned 40 just so y'all know these came, became <laughs> evident in my life. Like, like y'all became more blurry, life became more blurry, and uh, glasses became the next step in my life at 40. Oh, look, y'all are back. So, <laughs> a lot of times things get blurry in our life. A lot of times we need a, we need a, a new prescription. You know, I can remember here just, just last year, I had to get a new prescription. You know, you go back each year, right, and they redo your prescription, and you're like, no, I'm good, and then they put the new prescription, I'm like, oh, I wasn't good. You know what I mean? That type deal. That's, how, that's what happened to me this last time. Like, I wasn't good. You know, I needed a new outlook on things. But I'm so glad that his servant was with him. Do you know you need people around you? That wasn't good. Hang on, y'all, no, y'all had your chance. Do you know that you need people around you? 
Like, we have connect groups that meet during the week just so you guys can get together and get built up. So that you can get a little faith boost during the week. So important, the people you have in your life. The people that you surround yourself with. Because if, if Saul hadn't had this guy with him, like this wasn't what I love about this, because at the beginning of the story, Saul's dad said, hey, like I need you to go, go get a servant, go grab him, and you, you guys take off and go look for these donkeys. And he went and did that, but I'm so glad that he chose this servant. Because this guy wasn't a yes man. Oh, y'all didn't get that. This guy worked for Saul. He worked for his dad. And he went and got a guy that, that, that when Saul said, hey, let's go back, the guy didn't go, okay, let's go. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. It's like, hey, hey, we are so close. And you are so close to what you need from God. You are so close to reaching that point. Let's just ask the man of God so we can do that. Do you realize that Saul almost let his entire future go for 50 cents? That's all they had to give, but he was willing to do that. But what Saul didn't realize is that his trip wasn't about donkeys. It wasn't about going to the man of God and finding those donkeys. His trip was about becoming the king, and he didn't even know. And he almost quit. Can I tell you not to quit? Don't stop. That donkey mission that you're going through right now, that thing that you just are hate you're dealing with right now, that job that you're having to go through, you're there for a purpose. You're there for a reason. God brought you into that. You may not like it. You may not enjoy it. It may not be your dream job. But why are you there? Why are you doing what you do? Because God's got a mission for you to go on. And if you only knew what was just around the corner. See, a lot of times you think about Peter stepping out of the boat and, and the waves that were all around, and it says that he, when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he started to sink. See, a lot of times we take our eyes off of what God's asked us to do and our eyes off of Jesus and we put them on all our problems. We put them on our situations. And we start to sink. We start to go down. Why? Not because of anything that God told us to do, but because of what we were doing. It was our decision to stop looking. We can all see that through the eyes of scarcity, or we can all see through the eyes of faith. Do you have a choice in your life what to look at? Do you have a choice in your life what to see? And I want to challenge you to start looking through the eyes of faith. Hebrews 11.6 says that without faith, it's impossible to please God because the ones that come to him must first believe that he exists and number two, that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. See, I think there's a diligent part that we need to jump on. And I think we need to jump on the faith and start believing God and start looking toward him. So I challenge you to look into your life. And I challenge you to, to see what excuses have you been making. What excuses have you been making in your life? And what area of your life have you been living by fear and scarcity instead of faith? Take a huge look at it. You see, Jesus went on a donkey mission. Because on Palm Sunday, he literally rode in on a donkey. But he had a purpose behind it. But you know, even Jesus in the garden when he was praying, 
Jesus stopped and the human side of God came out and he said, Lord, if there is a way, if there's a way that you can take this pressure off of me, he said, but nevertheless, I'll take it off. Not my will, but your will be done. So I encourage you in your life, stop looking at your life and start looking at it through God's eyes. Because God's perspective is so much better than our perspective. Amen? You guys pray with me this morning. Father, I just thank you for today. I thank you for what you're doing and how you're doing it. Father, I thank you for people in our lives that help us walk and talk with you, God. I thank you for people that build us up, Father. And Lord, I just ask, Father, that if there's anyone in here that doesn't have someone in their life that builds them up, that you would send them somebody. Send them somebody to walk beside them to build them up. And Father, I also ask, that you show us people in our lives that we are supposed to help build up. Father, that we're not just receiving, but we're giving out, Father. We're giving from ourselves, Father. Lord, you're truly an amazing God.